Welcome to the Cardiac Rehabilitation and Secondary Prevention Programs Orientation Session. My name is Megan and I'm one of the rehab trainers with the Cardiac Rehab Team. Before we get started today, I'd like to go over a few um, pieces of information to help us work well together. The first of which is that these sessions are designed for education only. If you are looking for specific advice about your personal health concerns, we recommend that you connect with your family doctor or another primary health care provider. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to your cardiac rehab team. By the end of today's session, we hope that you'll be able to identify and have a better understanding of what cardiac rehab is and how we can help you what to expect as you move forward in the program and how we can work well together. And hopefully a takeaway from today is starting to think about your goals for cardiac rehab. When we ask patients what cardiac rehab is, it's really a, a program that's designed to help you feel better and have an improved quality of life, meaning you can do the things that you need and want to throughout the day. And the great news is that other cardiac rehab programs have done research comparing folks who attend cardiac rehab and those that don't. And for folks who attend at least 67% or more of their cardiac rehab program have fewer hospital visits, they're less likely to have another uh, heart event in the future, and they're less likely to die than patients who don't attend or are not referred to cardiac rehab. So this is good news for you, and our goal is to help you keep participating in your cardiac rehab program so that you have an opportunity to experience similar benefits. When we talk about cardiac rehab at St. Joseph's, it is a six-month program and it involves three parts, the first of which is medical assessment and management, and this includes exercise stress testing. And what we mean by exercise stress testing is it's a test where we'll ask you to walk on a treadmill or ride a bicycle to help measure your exercise capacity or fitness level. And it is a physician supervised test, meaning there'll be a doctor there monitoring you as you go through the test. The results will be used to help individualize an exercise program to you and also make sure that you're safe to move forward in your exercise programming. While it is called an exercise stress test, it's not a pass-fail test. It's just a measurement to help you see where your starting point is and how we can build moving forward. There are a few reminders we'd like to share with you on the day of your exercise stress test. The first of which is we recommend that you wear comfortable clothing and shoes as you will be exercising. Also, please bring your medications or a list of your medications that we can review with you. And please take your medications on that day as they've been prescribed to you by your doctors. Outside of that, our program also involves group education, which you'll hear a little bit more about in a few minutes and one-to-one -one coaching or counseling with different members of our team based on your needs and goals. But ultimately our goal is to help you feel confident in getting active and exercising safely, supporting you in learning how to make heart healthy food choices in your everyday life, learning how to take care of emotional well-being and mental health, as well as lowering your risk of having another heart event in the future or your heart disease progressing. In getting started in cardiac rehab, there are a few learning materials that we'd like to review with you today. Everyone hopefully would have received a copy of these materials um, in the mail, but we also have electronic files that we can email to you and they're also posted on our program website. To find them on our program website, you can search for St. Joseph's Healthcare London Cardiac Rehab and Secondary Prevention Program and it will take you to our program's website. Once you're there, you'll want to look for patient and caregiver resources. And on this page, you will see a list of our education materials. Just to give you an overview of the materials that you would have received in the mail, you can see a list here and we'll walk our way through each of them individually. The first of which are walking guidelines. And these would have been discussed or reviewed with you during your intake appointment with us. And these are recommended by our program doctors to help you start or get back into 
a routine of physical activity and exercise. They give you some great information around safety tips, as well as tips and tools to help you start setting goals around your activity and exercise. You also would have received instructions about how to access health university websites. And these were developed by the cardiac rehab program at the University Health Network in Toronto. And they're great online resources for our education topics. There's two websites. There's Cardiac College, which is a comprehensive guide to heart health information, as well as Diabetes College, which is a great guide to living well with diabetes. So to access this website, you can type Cardiac College into your search bar, and it should take you to the following website. You can see that it's divided into different sections so that you can review or find materials based on what you're looking for. To access Diabetes College, you can go to the menu at the top here or search for Diabetes College, and their website is set up very similar to how Cardiac College is organized. You also would have received a patient education guide, and this includes instructions on how to join a virtual session and a few troubleshooting tips. There's also materials for the orientation session and the upcoming 12 education sessions as well. The Lifestyle Change and Self-Management Workbook includes information and tools to help you start thinking about and supporting you in making changes that you want to make. So it includes some information around ways to help you get active, eat healthy, set goals, and how to build action plans to work towards those goals. You also have a blood pressure diary, which is likely the last page of that Lifestyle Change and Self-Management Workbook. And this is a tool that's designed to help you keep track of your blood pressure every day in a setting that's familiar to you. And the reason why we encourage you to use this is often when you come in to see the doctor or you come into the hospital to see us, your blood pressure is likely a little bit higher than if you were just relaxing and resting at home. So using this and, and reviewing it with your nurse gives you an opportunity and us an opportunity to make sure your medication's working the way that it should be. You also have an exercise diary, which is a tool that's designed to help you keep track of your weekly exercise. And you'll review how to use this with one of our rehab trainers to help you in progressing towards achieving your fitness or exercise goals. We also have an exercise app and you'll have a chance to learn a little bit more about this in a few minutes, but it's a, an electronic way for you to record and track your activity and exercise. You also have what we call our three-day food diary, and this is a tool where you can record what you typically eat and drink over a three-day period to understand what your current eating patterns are and identifying if there are areas or changes that you'd like to address. There are also instructions on how to complete the three-day food diary that also includes tips on helping you make more accurate measurements and descriptions of what you're eating and drinking. So hopefully you received these learning materials in the mail. If you haven't, please reach out to your cardiac rehab team and we'll make sure that we uh, send you any information that you are missing. After today's session, you'll get a phone call from one of our rehab trainers. And during that call, we'll arrange um, your enrollment in our 12-week group education series. And these sessions are really designed to help you learn more about your heart condition and how to live well with it. So focusing on feeling confident with getting more active and exercising safely, learning how to make more heart healthy food choices, as well as learning how to manage stress and improving your mental health. In terms of materials that can support you during your education sessions, we have the patient education guide, and this includes reading materials that review what's covered in the sessions, if you open to the table of contents, you'll see the topics listed and you can flip to the corresponding page number during the session or to review before or after. We also have video recordings of the orientation and education sessions available on our website, recognizing that not everyone is going to be able to attend a live session or if you'd like to review information on your own before or after attending a live session. And again, those can be accessed on our program's website 
by searching for the cardiac rehab program at St. Joseph's Healthcare London. It will take you to the following page under our patient and caregiver resources. You can see the video links that are posted here and find the corresponding materials in your patient education guide. In terms of your team with the cardiac rehab program, everyone will have what we call a referring physician. So someone who recommended the program to you. We also have our administrative staff or clerk to help you schedule appointments. We have three cardiologists, a nurse practitioner, and three registered nurses who support you around the medical management and assessment, and you would have met with them during your intake appointment. We also have four rehab trainers who support you around activity and exercise, a dietitian who can help you around heart-healthy food choices, and a social worker and psychologist to support your mental and emotional well-being. If you look at this image, you'll see that you are in the center of the circle and you're actually the biggest circle in the diagram. And that's because you're the most important person on your team. Each of us in the cardiac rehab program plug into your team based on your needs and goals. So everyone's team might look a little bit different. When we think about cardiac rehab, uh, we really view it as a journey that you're going on together to learn how to help you manage your heart health and health conditions. And we like to think a little bit about it as white water rafting. So you'll see an image of a group of folks um, who are going down a river together. You can see that there's some rougher water, there's some calmer water. Some folks look really excited, they're ready to go. Other folks look a little bit nervous, they're not sure what to expect. But you can see in the back of the boat that there's a guide. And you can think of that as your cardiac rehab team. We're here to help you navigate those calm waters, those rough waters, as well as you have each other to learn from and share experiences with. Over the next few minutes, we'll review a little bit around your exercise program. And the reason why we feel this is important is exercise acts like a medicine for your heart and body. And exercising for at least 30 minutes over five days each week not only improves your fitness, but it lowers your risk of having another heart event in the future. When we talk about what that optimal dose of exercise is, it has four pieces. The first is aerobic exercise, so things like walking, riding a bicycle, swimming, resistance training, which helps strengthen your muscles and joints, stretching to help improve your flexibility and balance, and lastly, daily movement, which is the idea of sitting less and moving more throughout your day. And when we talk about sitting less and moving more, we recommend that you try and get up and move for a few minutes every hour. So we'll take a few minutes to move. Hopefully this shows you how easy it can be to add a little bit more movement into your day, but we'll start with some shoulder rolls, and if at any time any of these movements are uncomfortable or causing you discomfort, please stop. And we'll go the other direction. Next, we'll reach up to the corner like we're grabbing an apple and then putting it down beside us. Great, we'll switch sides. And again, only reaching to a height that's comfortable for you. Fantastic, last we're gonna march it out on the spot. So walking in place or marching in your chair. So to help you closely follow the walking guidelines that have been given to you by your doctor, there are a few tips and tools that we'd like to share with you. The first of which is paying attention to your effort level during exercise. And the goal is to work in a zone that we call moderate. And so 
If you're working in a moderate zone, you should be able to talk comfortably, have a conversation, but not sing a song. You can also use something called the rating of perceived exertion scale, where a moderate zone would be an 11 to 14, or your effort level should feel fairly light to somewhat hard. If your effort is too high, so let's say you're getting into that hard or very hard zone, you're not able to have a conversation during exercise, or you're experiencing symptoms, so feelings that aren't normal for you when you're exercising, those are all signs that you may be pushing beyond that moderate zone. And so you need to lower your effort by either slowing down or not going as far during your exercise. There are also some safety tips that we'd like to share with you. The first of which is it's important to help your body warm up and cool down before and after exercise for about five minutes. And you can do this by doing whatever activity you plan to do at a bit of a slower pace. Also, we don't recommend that you consume alcohol, smoke, or use marijuana, but if you do, please wait at least two hours before you exercise. Some folks find eating heavy meals can make them not feel well during exercise, so we recommend that if you have eaten a heavy meal, that you wait at least two hours before you exercise to give your body time to digest that food. Also, if you're ill or have an injury, we recommend that you avoid exercise until you're feeling back to your normal. And pay attention to how your body's feeling. You're your best judge. You're an expert in yourself. So listening to how your body's doing and lowering your effort if you need to. Also, if you've been prescribed nitroglycerin or nitro, we ask that you bring it with you when you exercise so that you can use it if you need it. And if you're living with diabetes and are on a medicine that can cause low blood sugar, such as insulin or glycoside, we again recommend that you carry a fast-acting carbohydrate with you when you exercise so that if you experience a low blood sugar, you're able to treat it right away. In terms of some resources to help you with your exercise program, you have your lifestyle change and self-management workbook. This has information around why exercise is important for heart health, some strategies and tips around ways to get active, and also considerations for safe exercise. And if you can have this handy during your call with your rehab trainer, we'll go over some of the information in that book together. You also have an exercise diary, which is a tool that's designed to help you keep track of your weekly exercise. And also, if you can have this handy during your call with your rehab trainer, we'll go over how to use this in a bit more detail. Here's just an example of what a completed exercise diary looks like. It gives you an opportunity to fill out where you exercise, the time of day, if you're able to track your heart rate before, the type of exercise you did, how long you exercised for, what that rating of perceived exertion was, your heart rate during exercise, as well as the total number of steps that you take in a day. We also have an exercise app, which allows you to electronically record and track your weekly exercise using a smartphone, tablet, or computer. And this information can actually be viewed remotely by your rehab trainer in preparation for each phone call and can be reviewed by you at any time. And so if this is something that is a good fit for you, let your rehab trainers know, and they'll be more than happy to help you get that set up. Regarding heart healthy ways of eating, we recommend that you eat the Mediterranean way. And what does that mean? It encourages you to be physically active like we just talked about. Having things like fruits, vegetables, whole grain foods, olive oil, beans, nuts, seeds, as much as you can, making it the base of every meal. Having things like fish and seafood often, poultry, eggs, cheese, yogurt, meats, and sweets moderately or less often. The reason why we encourage you to follow this eating pattern is it's been shown to lower your risk of dying from a heart caused by 50 to 70 percent. You may have heard of some other eating patterns that are similar. The first is the vegan and vegetarian diet pyramid. The second is the DASH diet pyramid, which if you have been trying to lower your blood pressure or reduce salt in your diet, you may have heard of this before. But all three of these eating patterns have a few things in common. The first of which 
is that they all emphasize or focus on eating whole foods that come from plants. So things like fruits and vegetables, whole grain um, breads, rice, pasta, nuts and seeds, and beans and lentils. They also encourage you to eat at home with family, giving you an opportunity to share traditions, build new traditions, and potentially model heart healthy ways of eating to other people in your home. And a great tool to really help you make this a part of your everyday life is using something called the plate method, which is based on Canada's new food guide. So it encourages you to have half your plate be fruits and vegetables, a quarter of your plate be protein, so things like meat, eggs, beans, fish, dairy, and a quarter of your plate to be whole grain food. So things like pasta, um, rice, breads, and also trying to make water your drink of choice. To show you an example of a, a three-day food diary, this is what a completed one looks like. So it gives you an opportunity to record what you ate, how much you ate, and how it may have been cooked. That again, you can review and connect with our dietitian if that's helpful for you. The last thing we're gonna go over today is how to set goals and action plans. And you'll have a whole session dedicated to this particular topic. So we'll just give a very high level overview today. We know that making change is hard. And research tells us that the best way to help us make changes that stick in our lives is to learn how to set goals and make action plans. And there are three simple steps that you can take to make that change. The first is by defining your vision. The second is setting a goal. And the third is writing weekly action plans to help you work towards those two things. And there's a great resource on the Cardiac College website that you can use to help in creating a plan for change. So if you go to the Cardiac College website and click on their Thrive program, it will take you to this page. So you can see there's the Thrive tab there. Once you get here, you'll see that there are some various squares with different challenges that you can take. The first one is called Creating a Plan for Change. When you click that, there's some information that you can review, but it has a really great resource to help you start thinking about what these things look like for you. And if you go under the plan tab and click start my plan, it takes you to a form that you can fill out and you can save this as a PDF or print it so that you have access to it over time. And when we talk about a vision, it really involves thinking about where do you see yourself in the future, it encourages you to reflect on your own values and priorities, asking yourself questions like what really matters to you? What do you see yourself doing in the future? How will you be feeling? If you're healthier, how do you know that you're healthier? And who are you surrounded by? And there's space on page 20 of your education guide to write uh, your vision, or you can paste in pictures, whatever makes most sense to you. But as an example, my vision may be to have more energy. And so once I have that vision, I then want to think, or you want to think about goals that are going to help you work towards that. And the most important thing is that you're picking goals that you believe are important. It's not something someone else has told you that you need to work on, that you feel confident you can do them and you feel ready to work on them. So some examples could be getting more exercise on a regular basis having a restful sleep most of the time and eating in a heart healthy way. Those are going to help me work towards my vision of having more energy. Once you've thought about those goals, you then wanna think about or choose one to work on first. So it may be the one that's most important, you feel the most confident you can do and you feel ready to work on it. So for example, my goal may be to get more exercise on a regular basis. Then you wanna think about how you're actually going to make this happen in your everyday life, which is where your action plan comes in for, for a week. And this plan is really designed to help you think about the what, when, where, how much, and how often of working towards your goal. So thinking about my goal of getting more exercise on a regular basis, I might make my action plan for the next week to be 
that I will go walking on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning. And I live close to a park, so I feel like that'll be a nice place to walk. And I'm going to go for 15 minutes. And I'm gonna try and do this three times by this same time next week. Once I have the plan, I then wanna rate my confidence in actually being able to do this plan over the next week. So you'll see there's a scale from one to 10 with one being not very confident and 10 being very confident. And I wanna rate my confidence on that scale. So I would say I'm a seven out of 10 confident. I'm feeling good about my plan. If I was less than seven out of 10 confident, I wanna relook at my plan and think about what can I change so that I'm at least a seven or higher out of 10. That's kind of the critical number to help set yourself up to be successful. Once you've completed your action plan, it's really important that you take some time to reflect on it. So thinking about what went well, what didn't go as planned and doing some problem solving. So for example, my plan was to get out and walk three times at 11 o'clock in the morning. I only got out twice. And when I think about what went well, I enjoyed the time of day and I liked getting outside for my walk. But in terms of what didn't go as planned is the park pathway was closed for two of the, the three days of the week that I walked. So my problem solving may be of thinking of a different route that I can take so that if that happens again, I still have a place that I can get out and walk. After our session today, you'll receive a, a call from one of our administrative staff to schedule a date and time of a telephone appointment with one of our rehab trainers. And if you need to reschedule this appointment, please call 519-646-6100, extension 77000. And also during your call with a rehab trainer, you'll be booked into a 12-week education series. Thank you so much for participating. And if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to your cardiac rehab team.